This lecture is over dividends, stock split, and stock repurchase calculations. I'm your professor, Dr. Stephen Haggard. All of the examples I will be discussing here are from Connect's Algorithmic End of Chapter Question Bank for Ross Westerfield and Jordan's Fundamentals of Corporate Finance, 10th edition. McGraw-Hill Publishing, copyright 2013. Let's start by talking about cash dividends. The one thing we need to realize is that cash dividends don't make anybody richer. In fact, none of the things that we are going to discuss here today make anybody richer. It's just a different way of either handing out the equity of the firm or accounting for the equity of the firm. So let's start with this example about the Chevelle Corp. This is a market value balance sheet. Remember that the majority of balance sheets we deal with are book values. They say that there are 5,000 shares outstanding. Given that fact, we can figure out that the value of each share is $373,900 divided by 5,000. That would give us the per share price since this is a market value balance sheet. The company has declared a dividend of $1.60 per share. The stock goes X dividend tomorrow. X dividend means without dividend. The question tells us to ignore any tax effects and say what is the stock selling for today? As I just mentioned, we know it's selling for $373,900 divide by 5,000, which gives us $74.78 per share. Then they ask us, ignoring any tax effects, what will it sell for tomorrow? What's the difference between today and tomorrow? They've already told us that tomorrow the stock will be selling X dividend, which means without dividend. That dividend of $1.60 comes straight out of the value of the share. So we know that tomorrow the shares will be selling for $1.60 less, or $73.18 per share. Now we are going to ignore tax effects and figure out what the balance sheet is going to look like after these dividends are paid. Remember that equity and cash must decrease by $1.60 per share, and there are 5,000 shares outstanding. 5,000 times 1.60 is $8,000, and so the equity has to decrease from 373,900 down to 365,900. And the cash, which is where the dividend payment came from, also decreases from 43900 down to 35900 And so you might think, if you were the shareholder who got the $8,000, that you were $8,000 richer. But in fact, your wealth hasn't changed any, because now you have a dividend worth $8,000 and shares of a company that's worth $8,000 less. So your net wealth has not changed one cent. Now we will talk about stock dividends. We have the set of owner's equity accounts here for Alexander International. And if you recall from accounting, the value of common stock can be found in two different accounts, the common stock at par account and the capital surplus account. Every share of stock has a par value. And when we sell a share of stock, the par value gets represented in the common stock account. However, we often, in fact almost always, sell the stock for more than par value, and that extra gets put into the capital surplus account. So if we want to know how much in shares the firm has issued over its life, we have to add these two accounts together. And recall also that the retained earnings represents the undistributed income of the firm over its life. In other words, net income that we did not pay out as dividends. And we can add all those things together and come up with our total owner's equity. The question is, if Alexander stock currently sells for $20 per share and a 10% stock dividend is declared, how many new shares will be distributed? Our first step is to find the current number of shares. 
How can we possibly do this? Remember that common stock at par account? It has $42,500 in it, and that represents 50 cents for every share the firm has ever issued. So we can find out how many shares the firm has issued by taking 42,500 and dividing by 50 cents per share par value. And that gives us 85,000 shares outstanding. And so a 10% stock dividend means we will be issuing 8,500 new shares. Now we can take a look at how the equity would change as a result. And it's not really the overall amount of equity because we haven't really changed anything with a stock dividend. As I mentioned earlier, none of these things actually change the wealth of the shareholders. And anything other than cash dividends don't actually change the total owner's equity of the firm. However, when we do a stock dividend, we have to adjust the par value, the common stock count at par value, and we also have to adjust the capital surplus and retained earnings accounts. But the total owner's equity is going to remain the same. Let's see how we can do this. Remember that we're adding 8,500 new shares and they have a par value of 50 cents apiece. And so half of 8,500, 50 cents times 8,500, is 4,250. And if you add that to our original common stock at par of 42,500, we get 46,750 in the common stock par account. Now each of those shares was actually worth $20. And so for every 50 cents we put into the common stock account, we need to put $19.50 into the capital surplus account. And so if we take $19.50 and multiply it by 8,500 and add it to our previous capital surplus, then our new amount is $520,750. Now remember that our total owner's equity is going to remain identically the same. And so what that means is that the retained earnings account is going to have to fluctuate to make up the difference. So how can we find out what our new level of retained earnings is? Take your total owner's equity, subtract your new capital surplus amount, and subtract your new common stock at par value amount, and what remains is $608,120. That's your new level of retained earnings. Okay, now we're going to talk about stock splits. In stock dividends, the par value per share remained the same. And so we had to adjust that common stock at par account upward to account for the new shares. In stock splits, it's different. The par value per share will change. So if you've got a stock with a $1 par value and you split it two for one, the new par value per share will be 50 cents after the split. And so as a result, the value of that common stock at par count doesn't change in response to a stock split. It stays exactly the same. Here we have the owner's equity accounts for Alexander International. The common stock is 50 cents par value and there are $46,000 in that account. Capital surplus account contains $380,000, and the retained earnings are $828,120. We add all that together, and we get $1,254,120. What happens if Alexander declares a 4 for 1 stock split? How many shares are now outstanding? Well, the first step is to figure out how many shares there are before the split. We have $46,000 in that common stock at par account, and they each have a par value of 50 cents. Therefore, we have 92,000 shares outstanding. A four for one split would make the shares outstanding to be four times that much. So four times 92,000 gives us 368,000 shares after the split. That new par value is going to be one-fourth the previous par value. It has to be because we have four times as many shares outstanding, yet we are not going to change the amount of money in that common stock at par account one bit. 
So 50 cents divided by 4 is 12 and a half cents per share. Note that none of the values in the balance sheet other than par value change. What's going to happen to the stock price as a result of this 4 for 1 stock split? Well, each share of stock is now going to be worth one-fourth what it used to be. Has that increased shareholders' wealth any? Not really. Finally, let's see what happens if Alexander does a reverse stock split. They're going to do a 1 for 5 reverse stock split, which means for every 5 shares you currently have, you'll only have 1 share after the stock split. So how many shares are going to be outstanding after this reverse stock split? Well, we know there are 92,000 shares outstanding. A 1 for 5 reverse split would make the shares outstanding to be one-fifth as much. And so 92,000 divided by 5 gives us 18,400 shares afterward. And just like before, the par value, the common stock at par account value, is not going to change any. And so the individual share par value has to change to keep that account balance the same. And so we're going to multiply that par value by 5 in order to find out the new par value. And that's going to be $2.50 per share. Once again, none of the values in the balance sheet other than the par value change in a reverse stock split or a regular stock split. What happens to the stock price? Well, now it's five times what it used to be. If you're a shareholder, are you happy because now you are five times more wealthy? No, you own one-fifth as many shares as you used to own. In other words, your wealth has not changed one single bit as a result of this reverse stock split.